Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to introduce to you <laughs> the sailing legend, Dikafari MBE. So we're, we're, we're all sort of concerned about the problems with ocean plastics. Uh, to put this into all into context, I'd like to show a small video that uh, Dee's provided for us. It's think about all the time I've spent in the world's oceans I've seen a lot of changes over that period of time and that many laps around the world I've seen the horrible reality of the pollution in the oceans as well and to be the skipper now of turn the tide on plastic and have that clear message that I'm now taking around the world just to make people aware that there is an issue and we can actually all do something about it so this team is not about just delivering on the water in performance but it's also about delivering ashore and making sure that message comes home and we change the way people behave and conduct themselves and hopefully address the pollution and the plastic in our world's oceans. Sadly, the ocean is full of plastic. We've all been amazed by just the amount of plastic, polystyrene we've seen in the ocean. And also the most remote uh, southern ocean. We can see plastic around, so it's quite sad. There's something really unique with the Volvo Ocean Race. We travel to 12 host cities as we go around the world and together with the microplastic science project that we're carrying. So this is our microplastic analyzers. It's a series of filters that are, as the water goes through it, um, it traps any microplastics. As well as part of the sustainability campaign. We're getting raw data for the first time. We found here some microplastics particles already. And this data just can't be ignored now. The Volvo Ocean the Volvo Race. Ocean Volvo Race. Ocean Race. The Volvo Ocean Race. One of the biggest events in yachting, the Volvo Ocean Race, is coming to town. The power of the Volvo Ocean Race is that we've been holding ocean summits in a number of the stopovers. And these have invited key influencers, decision makers, actively seeking change, to come together to discuss the issue of ocean health. The good things we've seen come out of it are things like Alicante and Auckland signed into the UN Clean Seas Pledge, Cape Town, the VNA waterfront there, refusing straws alongside plastic bags as well. And even now in Brazil, we had them join the party as well. So we really are having an impact. Turn the tide on plastic. Turn the tide on plastic. Turn the tide on plastic. And trying to raise awareness of the damage done to our oceans. To have Sky Ocean Rescue, um, partner with us for this campaign around the world has been really, really fruitful for us. We're trying to amplify a message on a global scale and with Sky Ocean Rescue's reach that they get, we really have got that message out there for people to re-evaluate their relationship and attitude towards single-use plastics. to actually watch that and it's so inspiring. I think we, we know so much about, or we're learning so much now about ocean plastics. You know, I know that you're supporting our project with uh, the Ocean Saviour that's taking the plastics out of the oceans. I want to know a little bit more about how we deal with the plastics that are going into the oceans. Well, it's, it's hard because you've got to turn the tap off at source. It's um, we're Ocean Saviour's addressing what's already out there, but we've got to stop it getting in there in the first place. And it's about education, awareness and having choice. And we're trying to aim at a level where government and legislation and industry leaders are seeking change. And there is innovation and technology out there. And we just need as a public to demand that change to happen to speed up the process. We're trying to accelerate stuff. We know it's going to happen 
but we can't afford for it to take as long as it seems to be taking now. So when it comes down to when it comes down to the plastics entering the ocean, do we think we should be legislating about you know single use plastic? Do we think it should be you know we're talking about uh, plastic bag taxes and so on and so forth? And that seems to be having a, a positive effect on 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 changing our mindsets. Do we should, do we think we should be banning these ocean uh, sorry the, the the single use plastics that we've got going into the oceans currently? I think it's interesting because when you talk about legislation, people feel as if it's a, a nanny state and you're being dictated to and told what you can and cannot do. What we're saying is that everybody can make very simple changes in their everyday life that has a huge knock-on effect if we all do it together. So reusable bottles, reusable coffee cups, we're talking a bag for life rather than a plastic bag, no straws in your drink, and that's just changing behaviours. But in order for people to do that and willingly do it, we need the infrastructure there. So events like the yachtmarket.com Southampton Boat Show needs to have water stations so people can refill their bottles. Then people will come with their bottle. And as an organisation, you can push the boundary by saying to your retailers and your outlets, well, OK, we're not having you sell plastic bottles of fluid because we supply water fountains, you either supply in glasses, glass bottles, cans, but no plastic bottles. And it, it seems a little bit of a big ask, but it's doable. And the public that are going to sports events are expecting this now. And sport has that amazing ability to reach a much bigger demographic than scientists can, environmentalists can, or, you know, your local greenkeeper. So I think we need to use the fact that we have such a wide audience and start making a difference. So when it comes down to, so we've got 80, 80 odd thousand tonnes of plastic in the Pacific Gaia, we've got 20,000 tonnes of plastic going in a day. Education, where, where are we going to be going in the future for, for a lot of the Asian countries? How, how are we going to tackle that? Well, there are 7 billion people in the world that touch and interact with plastic every single day. It's part of our life and some plastic is very good. So we need to be careful how we educate but we are rubbish is somebody else's problem. So if Norway does a beach clean, all the rubbish they pick up is British products, British packaging. And it's the same everywhere around the world. It's always someone else's problem. And we need to try and stop that at source. So when you're talking to children, children are great because they don't, they think outside the box. They have no habits to break, no kind of, you know, normal behaviour that is so ingrained. So they question stuff and are willing to change and be adaptable. So they will go to the supermarket and say, well, why are we buying those avocados that have a skin around them wrapped in plastic? Why can't we just buy them loose? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And they challenge. And that's where probably our generation is the worst generation because we're the creatures of habit that have become adopted by this plastic culture over the last hundred years to make life easier. And we don't want to go back in time. We don't want to make shopping difficult. We want to go to the supermarket and make it easy. We don't have time, but we need choice. We need alternatives there. And there is alternative packaging, and that's what we're trying to look at. Compostable, therefore, can we use it? No plastic necessary or alternatives to that. And it's, that's where innovation and technologies come in and people can get excited because we have that innovation and technology in this country. What about, our, what about our health? What about how do we think this is actually affecting? I know you've done a, a lot of research uh, doing the, the Volvo. How, how are these uh, microplastics going to be sort of affecting our health, do you think? Well, I think that's the scariest topic that's coming out of the plastic issue. We looked at microplastic numbers for the first time ever, all the way around the world, and there were only three locations over 10 months sailing around the whole world where there were not microplastics present. And we took samples every single day, everywhere we went. And these are broken down from the visible plastics that we see in the gyres. So we know that it's the cause, but what we're now learning, and the next medical chapter is the nanoplastics. Yeah. And there's even smaller, and that's affecting pregnant women, children, it's affecting brain function, organ function. And if you speak to a doctor that's studying this, you'll be scared stiff to go anywhere, breathe anything wash your clothes, you know, everything is an issue. And so I think we just need to look at how we can be best practice in what we have. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, uh, something horrendous I read the other day uh, that they found that mosquitoes 
now have microplastics in them for crying out loud. You know, and that's now predators are, that eat those little creatures uh, never thought that they would have microplastics in them. Um, where do you think we're going to go with regards to our futures, with regards to the, the ocean plastic? Uh, sorry, the uh, the microplastics. I mean, um, the, the 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 oceans themselves are, are, are littered with these things. Bottlenose dolphins, for, for instance, they've got these endocrine systems that that are now have got the plastics in them. What do you think the future is for these little creatures and, and all the other things that are going on there? I, I think. It it's that knock-on effect. We talk about health and we encourage people to eat healthily and fish is often on that topic. So we don't want to scare people into, I can't eat fish because it contains plastic. Because if you look at it that way, you wouldn't eat or drink or wash clothes or breathe or do anything every day. So I think we need to be quite sensible in our approach. But if we can address it at all ends, so clean up the ocean of what is there, like with the Ocean Saviour, address the source, turn off the tap and form alternatives and change our behaviours, we're going to make a big difference and we can go back in time because we've only done this in the last hundred years. Yes. So we can reverse the process and clean it up and make it better. It's not all doom and gloom. Dee Kafari, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to ask one more thing. You're, you're very well known for sailing. You're a sailing legend. You're one of my legends. Any advice to anyone who is running a half marathon? <laughs> if anybody has got advice, I need that advice too, because we're both signed up for the same one. Um, as a Suntel ambassador, we, I roped Richard into running the half marathon with the ABP Southampton half marathon next year. So we both need to do some training. It's called Get Out There and Run, I believe. <laughs> Deep Kavari, thank you very much indeed. <laughs>